Play my damn music. Better bounce back and get the cheddar cheese. Yes, sir. We did it. A perfect 4-0 yesterday. Our wins were Orlando, Phoenix, Brooklyn, and Boston going for the sweep. Let's get it. Let's go. Drum roll. Before we get there, I will say the first person that won was not a subscriber. I'm able to see who's a subscriber, and he was not. So we moved on to the second person. Now, let's get the drum roll going. Da -da 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 -da. Our winner. Adrian Green 8661 congratulations, you are the winner of the 40 bucks. You put 4-0 in the comments. You were selected as the winner. I appreciate your support. Put your cash app down in the pinned comment down below. You might need to put a period before and after it so that the YouTube algorithm does not detect it. If that doesn't work, hit me up on my Twitter. Either way, I'll find a way to get you that 40 bucks. All right. With that being said, if this is your first time here, welcome to the Buster Bookie Show. What we like to do is to try to give out 40 bucks, just like I did today. If you'd like to qualify, all you need to do, number one, subscribe to the channel. As I said, you have to be a subscriber. Number two, comment below, 4 and 0. Oh, give us the good vibes that we need to sweep this card again. And number three, like the video. If you do all that and we get another sweep, I'll select somebody again and I'll cash up them again, another 40 bucks. I love to give out money. I hope I can do it again today. All right, with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into today's plays. The first play that we're looking at is going to be Denver against the Clippers. Denver is favored by three points in this game. On the season, Denver is 53-23. and 23. They're 30-17 and 17 in conference, 7-3 and three in their last 10. And on the road, this team is 22-15. and 15. For the Clippers, they're 47-28, and 27-19 and 19 in conference, Five and five in their last 10. And at home, this team is 22 and 13. Most recently for Denver, they were at home against San Antonio, beat them by five. For LA, they were on the road against Sacramento, lost them by, by 14 points. As I like to do first, let's take a look at the injury report. Denver's got a lot of guys that are out slash probable. Jokic is one of the probable guys, as well as Aaron Gordon. So keep an eye on them. Um, but Jamal Murray is obviously out, and that's it as far as their main guys go. For this Clippers team, I mentioned them recently. Kawhi Leonard, he's out due to a knee injury, and Joshua Primo is also not going to be playing. So as far as the rest of their top guys go, we know for the Clippers, they still have James Harden, Russell Westbrook, Paul George, and Ivan Zubik, those guys can all really score it inside. Uh, for this Denver team, you know, obviously Jokic is a key piece. If he's not playing, they're going to have to look at some other guys to really score for this team. But they still do have some solid pieces. You've got Jamal Murray averaging 20.9 points per game. Michael Porter Jr., 16.8, seven rebounds. Uh, Reggie Jackson, 10.1. So those are the main players for both of these teams. Looking at some ATS trends, Denver on the season, 34 and 40, two pushes. They are four and six in their last 10, 15, 21, and one push on the road this year. For LA, they're 35 and 40 against the spread this year, one and four in their last five and only two and eight in their last 10 at home, 16 and 19. Our play here is going to be to go ahead and give us the Clippers. My concern here is just kind of the nagging injuries for Denver. They're favored by three. We're going to take the points here. Give us the Clippers plus three. Looking at some key stats here, you know, the Clippers average about two more points per game on average. But when you look at the away versus home splits, they average about 116 a game. Denver typically averages 114, but on the road, they drop down to about 111. Also, looking at what these two teams have done over the last three games, they both have shot it very well from three, over 40%. So that's very remarkable, really. But two-point percentage, Denver, 49.4. That's a 7% drop-off over the last three games compared to what they shoot on the regular season. And the Clippers have shot it at 52.6. Also a drop-off, but we'll take that over 49.4. And they've also got a better effective field goal percentage over the last three. So... Again, I think the Clippers just have a bit more scoring options, um, especially if Jokic is not playing or if he's not fully healthy. We'll take the points here for the Clippers at home. Give us the Clippers plus three 
as our first play of the day. Moving on to our second play now, we're looking at Sacramento Kings at New York. New York favored by three and a half here. On the season, this Sacramento team is 44 and 31, 29 and 19 in conference, and on the road, they're 21 and 16. For these Knicks, 44 and 31, 30 and 16 in conference, they are also 6 and 4 in their last 10, at home, 23 and 14. Most recently, Sacramento was at home against the Clippers, beat them by 14. Meanwhile, New York was on the road against Miami, lost that game by 10. All right, let's see who's injured here. We mentioned Sacramento recently. They still have Malik Monk and Kevin Herter out. For New York, the big one for them is Julius Randle. He's been out since mid-March. Um, shoulder issue, so he's not going to be playing. Questionable is Mitchell Robinson, Josh Hart, and then also supposed to be out is OG Anunoby, most recently with an elbow injury. Top players for both these teams, DeMontis Sabonis, and De'Aaron Fox lead the way for Sacramento. Harrison Barnes is a solid contributor, averaging 12.3. But the guy that's really coming along is their second-year guy, Keegan Murray. 15 points per game, also leads the team in blocks, although that's not saying much. This team does not block many shots. For the Knicks, we mentioned Julius Randle, but he's not supposed to be playing. But Jalen Brunson leads the way for this team. 27 points per game, also leads them in assists. They get good contributions from Dante DiVincenzo. Um, Anobi is also supposed to be out. He's a key piece. Bogdanovich averages a little more than 10. And then Emmanuel Quickly and R.J. Barrett are also key scorers for them, averaging 15 and 18, respectively. Our play here is going to be to go ahead and take Sacramento. Give us the Kings here, plus three and a half on the road. Looking at some ATS trends, Sacramento 38, 36, and 1 against the spread this year, 5 and 5 in their last 10. But definitely worth noting here on the road, 22, 14, and 1. Good ATS number on the road for this team. New York 39, 33, and 3 on the season against the spread, 6 and 3 and 1 in their last 10, 20, 16, and 1 at home. So they are good also at home. Sacramento, very good on the road. Looking at some key stats here, though, over the last three games, Sacramento's been playing, you know, pretty well. Um, plus 10.3 is what they've been winning by on average. We know that they've won their last two. Um, some other key stats is what they've done defensively. They typically give up 115.7, but over their last three, they've only given up 102.7. That's about a 13-point improvement over their last three games. They've really been shooting it well from the three-point line, 41.2. New York has dropped over the last three, only shot it at 34.2. And in general, just looking away versus home, Sacramento shoots it better from two, effective field goal percentage, and overall shooting percentage on the road compared to New York and what New York shoots it at home. So uh, I think New York might win this game, but I don't think they, they win by more than three points. So we are taking Sacramento plus three and a half as our second play of the day. Moving on to our third play now, we're looking at Golden State at Houston. Golden State favored by four in this game. On the season, Golden State is 41 and 34. 21 and 24 in conference, but they've got it going lately. They've won five in a row, seven of their last 10. On the road, this team's 22 and 15. For Houston, you know, this was a team that was expected to be one of the worst probably in the NBA, but they are 38 and 37. That's definitely uh, decent for them. 26 and 21 in conference, and they've also played well lately, eight and two in their last 10 at home, 26 and 12. For Golden State, as I mentioned, they've won five in a row, most recently beating Dallas by four. They beat San Antonio by four, beat Charlotte by 18. They've been playing well. Houston has dropped their last two, most recently to Minnesota. They lost by seven. And at home, they lost to Dallas by 18. Looking at some injuries here for Golden State, the main one would probably be Jonathan Kaminga. He's listed as questionable. He's missed the last four games with left knee soreness. Probable guys are Dario Saric and Gary Payton II. For Houston, the big name is Alperen Singun. This guy is skilled. He's been out since mid-March, um, and he's still expected to be out. Tariq Eason and Steven Adams are also listed as out. 
we know when you talk about Golden State, Steph Curry, he's the man. 26 points per game. Klay Thompson's at 17. Kuminga, he's had a really nice year. Don't know if he's going to be playing, but he averages 16 on the year. Wiggins is averaging 13 for this team. Chris Paul, hmm, no longer in double digits, 9.2. 6.82 assists does lead them in that and steals for what that's worth. For Houston, the big name, Sangoon being out. They still got the athletic. Where is he at? Jalen Green, 19, basically 20 points per game. He's an explosive scorer. Going to be special here in a year or two. Keep an eye on him. Jabari Smith, 13 a game. Cam Whitmore, I think he's going to be good too, 12.1. Dylan Brooks, 12.5. And Fred Van Vliet, 16.8. He's up there, leads them in assists. Our play here is going to be to go ahead and take Golden State. We're going to take Golden State minus four in this game. Looking at some ATS trends, Golden State 41, 33, and one on the season, six and four in their last 10. But they are very good against the spread on the road, 25 and 12. For this Houston team, 42, 31, and two pushes. They're eight and two in their last 10, and they are also good at home, 26, 11, and one. So you got two teams that are both good as far as away versus home in their current situations. But looking at what they've done over the last three games, Houston has not scored it well. If they score 114 on the season, but over their last three, only 104.7. And that's not going to go well against a Golden State team who's really picked it up defensively, only allowing 103.3 over their last three games. That's 12 points better than what they typically give up on the season. And they've really been shooting well. I told you Golden State has been playing well. They've won five in a row. They've shot the three ball at nearly 41% over their last three games. Effective field goal percentage, 57.2% compared to only 49.1% over the last three. So as I mentioned, we are taking Golden State. This team is, I think, getting hot at the right time. Uh, as long as Curry, Thompson... Uh, you know, those guys are playing. We're going to like them to cover a lot of games, win a lot of games. So give us Golden State here, minus four at Houston as our third play. And our fourth and final play now, we're looking at Philadelphia at Miami. Miami favored by two points. On the season, Philadelphia 41-35, and 27-21 in conference, 5-5 five and five in their last 10. And on the road, this team is 500 at 19 and 19. For Miami, 42 and 33, they've won three in a row, 29 and 18 in conference, and they've won seven out of their last 10. At home, this team is 20 and 17. Most recently for Philadelphia, they were at home against Oklahoma City, won that game by four. And for Miami, they were at home against New York, won that game by 10. Philadelphia, the problem with this team in this game is their potential injuries. The four guys that are questionable, and three of them are key players, really arguably four, but for sure, talking about Joel Embiid, questionable with a knee problem. Tobias Harris, questionable with a knee problem. Tyrese Maxey, questionable with a hip issue. He's missed the last two games. Mo Bamba, listed as questionable as well due to an illness. Covington and De'Anthony Melton are listed as out. For Miami, they only got two guys out. Tyler Hero, he's definitely significant as far as him not playing, and Josh Richardson. Looking at what these two teams have, assuming that, you know, assuming which guys are going to be playing, who's still left for them to, you know, put up some buckets here. And it's, you know, if those main guys from Philadelphia are not playing, they don't have a ton else. Buddy Hilt averages 12, Cameron Payne 10, okay. Kelly Oubre 15, not bad, but the bulk of their scoring comes from those guys that I said are going to be out. I mean, Embiid's averaging 35 a game, Tyrese Maxey 25, Harris 17. Any combination of two or three, I mean, two out of those three guys being out is a big problem for this team. Miami, Jimmy Butler, he should be good to go, averaging almost 21 a game, leads them in assists and steals. Duncan Robinson's having a good year, averaging a little more than 13. Adebayo, he's good, 19.7, leads them in rebounds. Uh, you know, Tyler Hero is second on the team in scoring. That is definitely a big loss, but this team's got more pieces. And then don't forget uh, Jaime Jack is. 
Hawkes, whatever that is, name is, UCLA uh, graduate, 12 points per game. I like his game as well. And so I don't mind him getting some more minutes here. And so I think you guys know where I'm going with this one. We are going to take Miami here, minus two. Looking at some ATS trends, Philadelphia 42 and 34 on the season. They are eight and two in their last 10. And on the road, they're 21 and 17. For Miami, 36, 37, and 2, 5, 4, and 1 in their last 10 at home, only 15 and 22. So ATS-wise, it wouldn't necessarily scream for us to take Miami, but I'm more concerned about some of these injuries for Philadelphia. I don't think, you know, at least two out of those three guys are going to be playing. Looking at some other key stats here, starting with uh, what these two teams have done over the last three games, Miami really been scoring it well 109 on the season but over the last three games this team's averaging 123.3 they've really been scoring the ball and they've been defending really well only allowing 96 points per game to their opponents so i really like what i saw from that standpoint looking at some shooting they both shot the three-point ball really well 47.8 for philadelphia 46 for miami so that's a slight edge for philadelphia but again that's assuming i think all those guys are playing they're going to miss some three-point shooting when Maxi and Harris and even Embiid will throw it in once in a while. If those guys aren't playing, those numbers are going to go down. Big advantage from two for Miami, 58.2 compared to only 51.4 for Philadelphia over the last three games. And then the last thing I'll talk about in this situation is going to be turnovers. Miami has forced 11 steals per game over the last three games, and that's going to be a problem for a Philadelphia team that's been kind of struggling with turnovers. 11.9 on the season, but they've had 14.3 turnovers on average over the last three. And again, if their main ball handler, Maxi is not playing, I could see Miami getting more steals, Philadelphia having even more turnovers. So uh, as I mentioned, we are taking Miami minus two as our fourth and final play of the day. That's going to wrap it up for us today. As I mentioned at the beginning, if you'd like to qualify for another $40 giveaway, Number one, make sure you're a subscriber. I'd hate for you to do all this and then not be rewarded. Number two, comment below, 4 and 0, give us the good vibes. And number three, like the video. If you do all that and we have another sweep, I'll cash up somebody again, another 40 bucks. Our motto on this channel is to bust your bookie. We certainly smacked the hell out of them yesterday. Let's do it again. Let's go for the sweep today.